J.C. Klopfer. Thanks for coming to hear about my life. I gotta get my glasses on. I was born December 28, 1904. My folks, Louie and Edna Klopfer, owned a farm out on Range Line Road, and that's where I grew up. When I was a boy, my grandmother, Elizabeth, lived with us, and she and my grandfather, Christian, were born in Germany. So that's, that was how our family got started here in Newton Township. They came from Germany to Pleasant Hill to Newton Township. I had two younger brothers, Paul and Berlin. I graduated from Newton Township Schools in 1924. I'm pretty proud of that. I would like to pass around my diploma. If you would look at this, just see my diploma from... Uh, now it says Newton Township, but it wasn't Newton High School yet. In 1924, we had the new high school. It, op it opened in 1922, and I attended classes there, but, it, but they stuck with the old name in Pleasant Hill. So I was not a Newton Indian. I was a Pleasant Hill Eagle. I played basketball for the Pleasant Hill Eagles. The, graduate, the first graduating class that called themselves Newton was 1926, a couple years. My younger brother was in that class. Both brothers graduated from Newton, but I was a Pleasant Hill Eagle. I played basketball for Pleasant Hill. Uh, back then, after every, every, every time a basket was scored, they jumped center again at the center court, and I was the best jumper on the team. So every time uh, I did the jump ball, and we won a lot of games because I could jump pretty well, so we had possession of the ball a lot. In my lower grades, I, I attended a one-room schoolhouse, and it, I think the building's still standing there. It was right across the hog path from our farm. So the one-room schoolhouse on one side at Range Line and Hog Path. Our farm was Range Line and Hog Path right across the road, right across uh, the hog path. In 1921, my dad bought Schuessland's Meat Market in Pleasant Hill. We sold our farm out on Range Line at public auction, and we moved into town. Dad got a lot of his meat. He was a meat cutter. He got a lot of his meat by buying cattle and hogs and chickens from local farmers. He butchered it and sold the meat. He became well known for his fine cuts of meat and especially for his excellent sausage. We keep that sausage recipe a secret. Nobody knows except the cloppers. Two years later, that was 1921 when he bought the meat market. Two years later in 1923, Dad brought the grocery store that was next to the meat market. And that, in 1923, is when we became known as Klopfer's Grocery. We made our home there. That's when I was in high school. We, uh, we lived in the same building where the store is. The year after I graduated, I went to work in the family business. I became a partner. So my dad, Louie, and I were the store folks. When I wasn't working, I enjoyed spending time with my friends. We used to go to dances. It's the 20s. We went to dances at Winter Garden. We'd drive up to Minster. Russell's Point had great dances. We would go there. It was really fun, but I was a horrible dancer. I wasn't any good. I did keep playing basketball. There was an after high school team, still called the Pleasant Hill Eagles. And one night at an away game, I got hurt. A group of my friends brought me home. After they left, I asked my mom if she liked the girl I was with. She said she 
was all right, but I liked the other girl better. Well, the other girl was Helen McMacken. She was from Piqua. My mother's opinion mattered a lot, so I asked Helen out. We started dating about Christmas in 1925, and we got married on April 11th, 1926. Two days later was Helen's first day working in the store. <laughs> Paul joined Dad and I in the business in 1927. That was a big year for us. Later in that year, my, my mom died of tuberculosis. She was 43. Our little brother, Verlin, was just eight years old when she died. And then in November of that same year, Helen and I had our beautiful baby girl, Virginia Lee. With the new baby addition, Helen and I quit living in the upstairs above the store with Louie. And we moved to the, we moved from there to across the street. There was a two family house and we moved over to there. That was great. I spent most of my time working in the store. I enjoyed the good life that Pleasant Hill had to offer, and I loved living close where I had an easy walk to work. Um, life was good. In 1933, Paul, who had been working so much, married Mary Lynn Wineland. Right away, she also started working in the store, and the whole family then was part of Clopper's. Berlin graduated from Newton in 1936. He was the best basketball player in the family. So when he went on to college at Wittenberg, he was able to play basketball there. While Berlin was at Wittenberg in 1939, my father died. And soon after his death, Helen, Virginia, and I moved back to his house, which was connected to the store and we lived there for a long, long time. After Dad's death, we sort of redid the business. My brother Paul began to manage the grocery part of the store, and I run the butcher shop. We worked well together. During the war, I used the barn and the slaughterhouse, which is just west of town, to butcher meat. We would buy it from the farmers around. We would butcher it down there at the slaughterhouse. We would refrigerate it down there, and we'd bring the meat to the store the next morning. Customers would line up with food stamps during the war. So many things were rationed, and food was one of the big ones. Berlin didn't get involved, and he graduated from Wittenberg and went on to be a school teacher and then he was an administrator, and then he became a superintendent. He did marry Newton's home ec teacher, Nancy Cawhee, in 1942. After the war, things got easier for folks. Our business has been good for many years now. There are always people in the store shopping. Many of the out-of-town folks call in the old we shop for them, and when they come to pick their stuff up, everything is ready. They buy a lot of meat. I get a lot of compliments. We have many, many friends. I probably work too many hours, but I like the work. And I feel I have to be there almost, or I should be, because we have customers coming in. They're looking for me. Our employees like to have the boss there. For 20 years, I've lived in that house now, attached to the, over 20 years, attached to the grocery. I would get, I'd get up in the morning, go and open the store. I could slip out the back door and come home for lunch. Helen would have it ready. I'd go right back to the store after lunch. Most days, I'd slip out the back door again and come in and take a nap in the afternoon. <laughs> go back to the store and close at night and that's that was our that was the life um, we've really enjoyed making Clopper's grocery a success
Our daughter Jenny was valedictorian of Newton's class of 1945. She went on to Ohio State University and majored in nursing. In 1947, she married Jim Tilton, and they had two boys, two fine boys, Tim and Tom. Sadly, Virginia passed away in 1957, and she was only 27. Helen and I are raising our two grandsons. We built a new house just west of town near where the barn and slaughterhouse were. The Border family moved into the house attached to the store. The boys, Tim and Tom, actually have a baseball field in their side yard and they play indoor basketball. Tim hits golf balls in the front yard up into the cemetery. It's a, it's a really a wonderful place for boys to grow up. I stay busy working at the store. It's a clean, smooth running place. Our reputation is great for good prices, high quality products. Much you know, of our meat and produce is just locally grown right around Pleasant Hill. And we get it in bulk, sack it up, and, and resell the stuff. Sort of like a roadside stand, only a grocery store version of that. We've stayed with our belief that being closed on Sundays is the right thing to do, and so we do. I enjoy knowing our customers when they come to shop. Helen and I are very good friends with many of our employees. I'm on the board of directors at Citizens National Bank. I'm a Masonic Lodge member. I'm a deacon in the Church of the Brethren. And it's a pleasure for me and my family to live and work in this wonderful community of Pleasant Hill. Thank you.
about Jasper Marshall. Born in Greene County, Spring Valley, 1853. 22, enlisted in the United States Army, 7th Cavalry under famous General George Custer. We uh, ended up in a big battle, we know about as the Little Big War. Suffered a great defeat. Quite frankly, I don't like to talk about it. I'm not going to tell anymore. Come on. I'm not getting wind blown for nothing. Well, you probably want to learn more about the battle. The 7th Cavalry was divided into different companies. And so it was divided into three, three columns. General Custer had the center column that did the frontal assault. And they didn't anticipate the number of Indians they were going to face the sooner the shine. And we were, the, 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 the 7th Cavalry was sent there because as of January 1876, the Sioux and Cheyenne were supposed to honor their treaty, which is to go on to the reservation. But they didn't do that. They were protecting what were sacred lands to them, and also preferring not to be defined on the reservation. And uh, federal troops discovered there was gold in them that are held. And so, Sioux and Cheyenne had more reason not to trust that the federal government would protect the interests of the sacred land. But, 7th Cavalry was sent anyway to try to convince them to move along as per their treaty. Custer took the center the line, did the advance. Poor strategy, did not anticipate just how many natives he was going to face, thousands. And so those who were directly with him were all decimated. Now, Jasper's responsibility was to be with pack animals, the train of supplies that were providing the troops and backup. So he didn't get to see that battle directly, but was engaged in some fighting. Uh, got himself injured on his left side and in his left foot. Settled himself, God knows why, in this place called Pleasant Hill, Ohio. Um, got married. Um, not sure that he had any children. Uh, but basically, farming, odd jobs, day laborer, that kind of stuff. Doubt he spent much time talking about his experience in the war. Back on the national stage, there were people who came out. You know, it was a tragic defeat, very demoralizing for the country. But there were some people who decided to make themselves a little fame and fortune by speaking up and claiming to be the sole survivor of the battle. 